So you just finished trimming a brisket. What do you do with all the expensive meat you just trimmed off? You know we're not going to waste it. I'm going to start off by separating out the lean trim and the softer fat. That's going to go in one pile, which will go for ground beef. All the tougher fat, connective tissue, or anything that's not going to make for good ground beef will go in a separate pile, and that we're going to render down for smoked tallow. More about that in another video coming up soon. Let's just run through this quickly. We're gonna make a nice little pile here of lean beef. It's gonna be perfect for ground beef. We're gonna be adding plenty of fat to this. It's definitely not gonna be lean when I get done though. Probably gonna be about 30% fat when I get done. We'll see later after we grind it what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on the scale and see what we got. This right here, this is the burger blend. 1.6 pounds, a little over a pound and a half. And here is one point, here's the powder render, almost three pounds of fat. We put this meat in the freezer for an hour until it got a little bit crispy. Not all the way frozen, just partially frozen. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in my LEM number 12 grinder. Turn it on and start feeding it through. If you pay attention while it's trimming the meat up, you'll see I cut it into pretty small chunks. This grinder can handle big chunks of meat, but from my experience, you get a better grind if you take a little bit of time and go ahead and cut them up. Helps prevent any of that connective tissue from wrapping around the blade. You always want to have a nice clean grind you see how this meat's coming out and you can see the difference between the fat and the lean that's what you want anytime it starts to smear that's not a good sign most likely you either have your meat too warm or your blade or plate is getting dull proper grinder maintenance is really important so we got all the meat run through we're going to grab one handful of the ground and drop it back in this will help push through any meat that was left in there just go ahead and let it run for about 10 seconds or so. And most all the meat is going to go ahead and get ground this way. You don't want to leave too much behind in the grinder with the price of beef these days. Let's take a look at this meat. And as you can see, there's plenty of fat in this. It's going to be delicious. I'm going to go ahead and make some little balls here for smash burgers. I'm going to go with just under a quarter pound of meat. Normally I go a little bit bigger. But I'm a little short on meat to go around, so we're going to stretch this just a little bit tonight. I find digital scale really helpful. Keeps your balls nice and consistent. We all know we want consistent sized balls. Just got a piece of parchment paper on top of the scale. Working outside today, wind's going to keep blowing that away. But once we get a little bit of that meat on there, it won't go anywhere again. So we're going to make little balls. Going to go ahead and speed this process up a bit. We'll get all these balls weighed out. Once they're all weighed out, we're going to take our hands and roll them and work this meat just a little bit. With fresh ground beef, I always like to work my meat a little bit. Helps the meat stick together, get a little bit of protein out of there. Look at the fat content in these. Of course, we got to kick it up a notch, and we're going to start off with some of this homemade bacon. Check out a video I made a while back on how I made this bacon. This is the cold smoke. Of course, we got to go in with some onions to soak up that bacon grease. We're never going to waste bacon grease in this house. Put them on, let them cook right beside the bacon. Don't forget to salt your onions. Going in with some Redmond's Real Salt, my preferred salt. How do you like your bacon? This is almost done. I'm give it a flip and just cook for a couple more minutes and it's gonna be done. Keep the bacon moving so it cooks nice and evenly. I like to take my onions when they're almost done and push them all the way to one side. This way it's a little bit cooler over there and they won't burn. They'll sit here until everything's done and stay nice and warm without getting burnt. Just mix them every now and then. There we go. To me, that is the perfect bacon. A little bit chewy, a little bit crunchy. Time to make these smash burgers. Let's get these patties on. And then we're going to use a piece of parchment paper and press down with this nice heavy-duty spatula from Lampson. This thing is made in America. Check out the link and discount code I got down below. You're going to definitely want one of these spatulas. This thing is a beast as is all their other grilling accessories. Okay, this parchment paper came in handy, kept everything from sticking. Now, of course, going in with some more Redmond's Real Salt on these burger patties. One side is enough to salt when they're this thin. Now I got some leftover brisket. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in. We chopped it up nice and fine. We're gonna crisp it up and warm it up a little bit. These burgers are gonna be intense. Look at all that beautiful beef fat on this flat top. Give these a flip. 
this monument grill flat top has been awesome i love this thing and it's nice and small which means when i'm not using it i can keep it out of the way getting a nice crust on these but they're a little bit delicate because of the really high fat content next i'm going in with some buffalo wing cheese from gardeners of wisconsin gonna really kick this up a notch Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications. Also, head over to my Instagram, at RustyBBQLamb, and give me a follow over there as well. Lots of daily cooks you're not going to want to miss out on. All right, it's almost time to build this burger. First, we're starting off with a chaffle, which if you don't know, is just a waffle made out of egg and cheese. Got some homemade avocado mayo on there. Next, we're going with those caramelized onions. Next, going to stack these burger patties up. Look at the juice just dripping off this brisket. Going to pile this up. Got to back up the camera. This burger's getting tall. Now we're going with the homemade bacon on top. Let me know. Do you think you could get your mouth around this burger? This is going to be a challenge. This thing does not even want to stay together. There it is. I didn't get to film the taste test, but let me tell you, this was delicious.